Now we're going to use Vogue on our vocal track. So I'm going to solo our vocal, and then I'm going to drag an instance of Vogue onto the audio track in Ableton. So the first thing that I am usually concerned with in vocal recordings is that I want to make sure that any unneeded noise between when the vocal is coming in and out is trimmed out and the gate is extremely useful for doing that. And basically what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to leave the gates threshold nice down and low just to trim out any really quiet uh, background noise on our vocal track. Now definitely we want this vocal to be cutting through the mix here. So I'm going to be using the preamp and I'm just going to turn off the other effects for now just so I can hear in isolation how these two are sounding together. So we've got the vocal looping and now I'm just going to start playing with the overdrive and the high pass controls here uh, to get the sound that I'm looking for. Right that microphone right it like this. Pick up the microphone a little bit like this. Living time I come show about the living terrorist. Pick up the microphone show about the fire awesome. Good. So we've added some grit to the vocal, which will help it cut through, and we've added some high pass at about 100 hertz to cut out the unneeded low sections of the vocal, and so it doesn't enter into the same range that we have our bass and our kick drum. Now we're going to apply some compression to the vocal. Because it's a lead element in the track, we definitely want it to be loud front and center and for it to cut through the mix. So we're going to be using some compression to help it do that. Right the microphone, right it like this. Pick up the microphone, a love it like this. Living time, come show about the living terrorist. And in this case, we're using quite a bit of compression because you can see it's got a relatively big dynamic range and we want to have a nice even output level from the plugin. Up next, we're going to use the dynamic EQ because we're definitely going to be doing some EQing to the vocal. And when creating a track, it's really important to listen to whatever element you're doing EQing work on in context. You don't want to have it soloed. So we're going to unsolo the vocal so we can hear the bass and the drum track as well. And we're going to work with the dynamic EQ to help it sit nicely in the mix. Now we're just going to quickly go over the dynamic EQ because we didn't do that before. And we have, first of all here, we have a basically a slow fast slider. And as you can see, what this is doing is globally across each one of the bands, this is controlling how quickly the compression is acting. And so I can just drag this backwards and forwards to be able to control exactly the speed of the compression on each one of the bands. So now let's listen to it and just play with the EQs and the compression to get the sound we're looking for. Right the microphone, right it like this. So we've added a little bit of compression to the mid and the high bands and we've added a little bit of EQ boosting to the mid and the high bands as well too just to help it to cut out nicely. And in our last section, we're going to make use of the effects module in Vogue to make the vocal really wet sounding. I want this vocal to sound quite wet, quite effects up. And so we're going to activate our effects module. And in this case, what I'm going to use is delay. I'm going to add some nice delay to the vocal to kind of dub it out a little bit. So we're going to activate our delay and crank up the level. And we have a feedback slider, which will control how long it takes for our decay to feed back down to zero. And then we have a decay time or delay time slider here. And again, conveniently, as you put your mouse over it, it gives you an indication of actually it's BPM synced tempo. So I'm going to move this up to probably quarter notes here. There we go. And let's just listen to how that sounds. Good, and now we're going to do the same technique we used before, which is using our filter to filter up the effects alone. So we're going to apply the signal flow to effects. We're going to go to 
high pass. And again, we're going to keep our resonance uh, down low, and we're going to high pass the effects at uh, maybe about 1500 hertz here. Next, I'm going to use the mod section to do some interesting modulation effects to the delay tail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it from envelope follower to LFO. I'm going to activate it. And now you can see I have a pick list here and I can choose from filter cutoff, filter resonance, delay time, delay feedback, delay amp, which is level, reverb room, reverb decay, and reverb amp, which is level. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to have the LFO controlling our delay time. And what you'll see it start to do is in real time you'll see the slider actually start to move up and down, which will give you a visual representation of what type of modulation is happening here. So we have our LFO set and we have it syncing and it gives us our speed in Hertz and then we can control the amount of the LFO being applied and in this case what we want to do is actually just solo the effects return and I'm going to solo the vocal channel and I just want to hear what this is doing to my uh, delay Good, so we're getting a really, really interesting effect here where it's controlling in real time the delay time, which is causing some pretty interesting glitchy effects. Now, the other thing we want to do is we want to slow this down a little bit. So we want to have this moving a little bit slower. And I've pumped up the level here just so you can hear what this sounds like a bit better. So let's just listen to that.